everybody. So if you were showing for a reshort in the Bund this morning, because Bund already made its short continuation play in, in the pre-market, as you can see in my hypo number one. So if you were flat as I was, because I'm not trading before 9 a.m. cash open, you, you've you seen this a huge short move, which reaching um, the targets, and now is a little bit in a, in a pullback situation. And if you wonder how to get into the, the uh, let's call it a reshort, so the continuation into the short again, you can handle this with different plays. What I'm normally doing is waiting after it sets back a little bit to the LVN of the overall, of the overall today, um, today uh, you see this here, um, profile. And you see this is this low volume node area starting from 55 to 59. You can also see it here in uh, in the intraday chart that it between 55, 57, 59 that there was no coming above. And then prices trying to get into balance after the open here. And if you're wondering then how again to get into the, the reshort of this whole move, because you know the bias is short and you're in a short trend, then how to play it? So. Normally, um, I'm trying to get in with um, rejection on the upper range edge of buyers. So I want to see people trying to push higher. As you can see, a whole time in Delta, they closed. Maybe it's from closing of the shorts and also from some people trying from the short term to push higher again. You see that there is no coming above the 5758 area. So if you were searching for an entry back to the short, then there are two kind of plays. The first situation is here. You see it in 9 o'clock and 16 minutes. They try to push even harder at the top compared to this period before. You see this in the as bit volume difference. You see this accumulated in within the 30 second time frame buying market. And you see there are two huge amounts trying to get higher. This is very important moment because there somebody trying to buy. And if no follow up buyers come in, then they guys are trapped. They are trapped. So what I want to see then is a harsh, a hard reaction, rejection by sellers on the top to think where is the cheapest price here to get into the short right now. So what happened then after those in this one minute here you see that they again rejected at nine o'clock and seventeen. You see that here that in 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 the moment where this um, was built this ask bit volume different bar. You see that it already got more sellers in it after a short time, a short second try of buyers to, to save their positions here because they got absorbed this, those shorts. But this was the moment where you can see that there's nobody else more, more buying and also people going into the short. So this was the moment where you can think if there is no more interest in buying above and also first people uh, uh, um, are, are courageous enough to, to play a little bit more short to push the people out of the lungs. This was the moment where you can think about wow, why not go into here the short? Because this is a cheap price. Remember, the bias is on my side. We already see balance shortly tied to this overall LVN. So, this is the reshort possibility number one. So, you have to recognize those patterns here. You have to see there is somebody trying to push higher and then you have to see within a few minutes a harsh rejection, a hard rejection of the sellers. And what happened then uh, one minute later at 9.18. So for me, this would be the entry for this play. And you always have to stay in mind 
Where is the stop right now? If you have, uh, if you get in here, I would go with a with a two tick stop above this LVN area, a two tick above this last high above 80, 58, 59. So stop would be about 60, 61. And one would have come with this play into the trade at around 77, 76, 77. So this would be a three to five, let's say four to five tick stop. And on the other side, the reward would be at least that people trying, if they can take out the low here, can push lower into the low at least for, of the day of this pre-market low with the 38 or even get lower, which would mean a continuation of the ongoing short move. So the second chance to play the short here would be to wait till uh, value is built below this distribution we have right now. So the main distribution, which is built obviously from cash open in between, oh, sorry, what is this? Uh, what was built in between 51 uh, and 58. If you wait that they build value uh, below it, this is the second chance to go away with the impulsive selling away from the right now at the moment POC. This is also possible, but which may work good in a market like S&P 500. It's not always working so good in the Bund because the, the behavior of the market participants in Bund is a little bit different, of course, to the E-mini in terms of the order speed and the liquidity. So I made the observations that it's better to get an entry orientated on a balanced area from range thinking in this moment from the from the upper zone of this micro balance area and look what what's going on and then you have a cheap price you don't risk much and you have a wonderful reward what happened then think of it may think of it as as you would have traded this, then you would have been entered around this area and now are in the trade. And now reflect your emotions for the second step. This is the training, what you then have to do. If you have a play that works out and you can backtest it simple, even manually in Sierra, and you know, okay, I can relate to this play. It, it works in, let's say, five or six of 10 times and you have a good risk reward and you don't even have to have a high hit rate. It, maybe it's enough if you have 30 or 40% of those plays works. Then it's the second thing you have to achieve. To, you have to become really good as a trader. You can't be just without emotion when you start to trade or when you're in progress and, and on your way to a consistent profitable trader you have to know that there will be emotions in my term it is like before entering i said this is emotion number one emotion number one for me is i'm afraid sometimes or was really strong really hard afraid of of of, of um, pulling the trigger so because i was afraid of what happens then if i lose how can i handle can i handle even can I handle the emotions that that appear when losing a trade so this is number one, emotion number one, afraid of pulling the trigger. A lot of people have the same or have the same problem. Then emotion number two is if you get into the trade and it runs on, like in this situation here, and I have to start to make a screen, to paint on the screen because it's much easier to show you guys. Think of, you entered here and now your position got down here. You may be... You may be up to uh, six, seven ticks in, 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 in profit. And now you're, you're quite happy. And now it's going back, coming back. At this moment, so this was emotion number one before pulling trigger. Now it's emotion number two. In my case, emotion number two is that now, and this is a proven thing which every, every human is confronted by because this is the, 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 the thing with uh, gambling and, and um, prospect theory. What you have in the situation is you're afraid of giving away the, the whim right now, the profit. And this is in the modern prospect theory, which a guy named Daniel Kahneman 
who got the Nobel Prize for it for this is that of course uh, that a loss weighs heavy heavier than a than a win actually twice as much so you're twice as much negative emotion um, about that you may have to give up this win again and this is a problem for most of the people so this will be led for most traders to give away the win the, the, we give away future profits but math mathematics will be against you if you take risk and then with one or two ticks and profit again when it's coming back close the position then you will always only make two or three ticks winners and remember if your win rate then is 30 or 40 percent so you make four times three ticks is 12 ticks plus and make six times four ticks minus which is 24 then you have a losing streak and you will lose money in the markets this is very important so this is the problem number two and motion number two then think of it if you can accept this that there is an emotion okay I, I, I show you later some techniques how to get in control of your emotions which is not easy but can be done and take some time so we see in number two you're into this and you still let's assume you can handle these emotions because you're already at once trader also in your mindset not only your place because a play development you will you can have in a, in a few months or half a year or whatever and you can you can handle it and now you stay in the trade and see okay wow I had a good entry I'm not in a minus and also controlled in my case emotion number two see now what happens now happens that what you want to see price is now getting lower and you see this is the distribution and now we start to build value below in the short case in the short trading it's always faster than the longs because sometimes a lot of the times people get out of positions and shorts are normally running faster than longs so sometimes the building of value to get into the trade which i told you before was the second um, the second way to get into the, the the trend play which i say i don't prefer or uh, prefer it because i prefer more, the, more, the, more the, the, the range into it from from here the thing is that it's going very fast so we have here the situation um, that the value was built only in this period of time this is a five five minutes so you would have gotten you, you, you needed to get into this short trade around here in this moment when you see they built value so this is you will agree this is a really short-term situation this is very quick better if you gotten here in here but no matter what for me only for you it may be different because it have to be right for you it have to be feel the right way for you it have to match with your kind of thinking in looking at the market and feeling the behavior of the other market participants with the help of first big picture i always repeat these things because they're important with the help of big picture preparation then checking the market bias intraday and use for it volume profile in my case and the auction theory so assume you're in this trade and you see now how market reacts market reacts right now in this may in this kind of way that we are at the low of the day in the region of the low of the day and they can't go lower right now this is where it is absolutely reasonable to think about where is my profit where will i take profit if price can't stay below of this i will delete it of this micro zone here of this micro wedge consolidation where is my profit now this is different we're not now talking anymore of uh, giving away profits too quick if you have a strategy also for leaving the market thinking of where is the reason to sell because now if you have the, uh, the ability to read the market you may see that at the bottom of the two days low is no more interested in selling and now there is no reason for staying into the trade too long that doesn't mean I would not leave this trade before some special uh, strategy mark so I wouldn't leave before we can't 
um, built uh, the, again short term value above this at the moment low volume node at 46. So I want to see people go at 46, 47, 48, setting back and active buying volume coming in, volume coming in again. Then you can you can uh, end this position around here. You may get out at, at 48, 49 or something. Then math mathematics will work for you because you then have a seven, eight tick profit. And that's absolutely okay because this is at least when you work it with a four tick stop, which always is, is possible in Bund, then you will have at least a two to one risk reward, which is not bad. And it, it will lead to that it's okay if you only have a, if a win rate for what, let's say 50% or something. Now see what happened here. They push it at once and now you will see that prices will come back, pull back to this area here of, of low volume node. And when they come back to this, oh, when they will, when they go back to the low volume node here, you can see you will you will see that they uh, that they come in bias in again. So let's see what happens. Right now you see they even try to push it harder. They even made it back to the distribution edge here, and even uh, trying to get into this in this in this um, into into this long excuse me, with, with buying, blocking by the bid. You see, this is the actual order book. They see they block already now on the downside with more than 1,000 contracts. So there, in this case, there isn't even a coming back. So I would close this position right now in the moment because this is, this is, a, this is a different scenario. They got back and did even not test the LVN coming back. So at this time, yeah, this is live. So... <laughs> You, you can prepare can be prepared for it in this in this case I would uh, close the position right now so in this case that's not perfect because I entered maybe around 67 66 and got out of it at 51 so this is only a four or five tick plus trade in this case that's not good because if you will have only kind of those trades where only make four or five ticks profit and you only have a hit rate of 40 or 30 or 40 percent then you may have a, a zero sum game but in this case it doesn't matter you can't hold on a trade if there's something happen which you obviously see that there's enough buying power to not reach go back to make a pullback to the lvn here but trying to get in even passive by pulling the bit up and making pressure to get into this, this, this longs. So this is important to see. But what, what's, then, what's then the solution for this problem we have right now? So you, for me, the, you don't have to have a solution because this is happening uh, not, not, not quite often. No, this is not really quite often. That they are so strong, um, taken out, can't go uh, lower than um, going above the LVN, and normally they prove it with a pullback. And this has not happened uh, very often. So there is no need to uh, for see this before. You can see it before, you don't know. You have to rely on this what's happened most of the time. And most of the time they will make a pullback. So mathematic and statistically, there is no reason for play difference because most of the times you will have success with this thinking. So, that was live, how to play um, a, a kind of reshot with the trend and um, checking your emotions. At the beginning I said, or in the middle I said, I will give you some at, um, at, uh, recommendations for how to work on your emotions. So there are some kind of, kind of, um, let's, what to call them. Oh, there are some kind of things you can do for getting more in control of your emotions. So there are some kind of of uh, Lexis, let's call this Levis. And um, or tutorial or practices or exercises. First, you have to control yourself. What is your emotion? around the moment of execution. So you will get a, a, a pencil on a paper or you can open a, a sheet on your, on your computer and write down the emotions right before you executing a trade, during the execution phase and then ha while handling it. 
while managing the trade. This is the first thing. Take a deep breath. Make some meditation, whatever you want, but get down in your mind, in your soul and feel everything and deep inside and feel what are the real inner emotions of yourself. And then you will see something like afraid of something, feel a little bit of pain, feel a little bit excited, maybe having a higher heart beat and uh, rate and um, feel a little bit pressure. And you write down all those emotions. Then while you're handling the trade, while you're managing the trade, you write down your emotions, what you're feeling, what kind of emotions are there, giving up the, the profit, yeah, or go, feeling I, I losing the control of something. You all write this down. When you've done this, you also can do, in, if you trade like me, maybe the morning session of two or three hours, you can make the second thing is, the second practices, tutorial is, to set a timer every 30 minutes and do, if you're not trading then, uh, do every 30 minutes in the time when you may not observe yourself why, because you're not trading, then you make a 30 minute timer and prove your emotions and what you think and your feelings every 30 minutes. So in a morning session, maybe five to six, four to six times. And you write down those emotions too. And what, what is the, the sense about it? Um, the, 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 the meaning is to, to find out what is your feelings and what is your all, what are your emotions? Because you have to understand that those emotions are caused by old behavioral patterns that once saved you in your life to stay alive or to handle situation successfully. You have to understand this. Those are old behavioral patterns that are the reason for those emotions you've written down, okay? This is the, the first step to get known of this, to know those, to get, um, yeah, to, 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 to feel what, what, is, what is all behind this. And then if the next step is, the next day when you may start to trade, you write down again and again, and after a few days you feel, you have to say, now I know there's coming those emotions. In my case, emotion number one, before execution. Emotion number two, after into trade. Emotion number three, when it's not running. And so on. And then you have to say to yourself, this is exercise number two, those emotions are okay. To stop the, the fight in your brain, okay? Don't fight them anymore. You say, those emotions are okay. They were, for me, very important in the past. They protect me. They have helped me to stay alive. These are my old behavioral patterns. I'm a friend of them. They are okay. And right now, but for trading, I don't need them. I don't need those. And they're okay. In this moment, when you start to accept them, you're putting them like into, you put them in like uh, into some, uh, let's say, into some container, some vascular, and leaving them and, 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 and put them next to your desk. Don't you just put them there. And you know, they're here, they're my friends, they're okay. They were super for me, super important in the past, and now I accept them, they're here. And the, but they don't know, I don't need them now for trading because they don't help me in trading. They're okay, they were okay, but I don't need them and they don't help me in trading. And that's what you do in the next days and the next day. But you have to be active. You have to do so actively. You're thinking of it and have a plan and have a strategy, okay? Because if you're not having that, you won't do it. So you do this and you will feel that the emotions are less more less more extensive than they was before. This is very important because then you get much more having more clear mindset while trading because that's the thing what we then call a clear trading mindset. You leave those emotions through acceptance. 
you don't fight them anymore. Acceptance and fighting are two different things. And when you're getting into this, you become clear and more clear. And you're having a clear mindset. So you make it then, you, only then you're able to make reasonable and clear decisions, which are needed in the face, remember, of execution and then managing the trade. So, and all of this, of course, only works if you have a straight strategy. That means a big picture preparation. That means a tool, an instrument to read the market. In, our, in my case, it's the auction theory and volume profile, which volume profile is also based on the market profile. And this is important. Then you have to develop plays which you can backtest without the emotional pain, without the you may have, I had a little bit even emotional pain while backtesting. So I was, this emotional, this behavioral patterns were so strong that I even had it to do during backtesting. But it's not the same strong pain as you may have in live training. Yeah? And um, when you have made a play and have a strategy and uh, managing the trade, then you have to go to the second part of developing uh, for, for a consistent profit trade. And this is this creating a mindset okay so this is my my today's uh, thoughts about becoming consistent profitable trader and this is two things you have to 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 know and have to be really good in and then you can make it all right that's it for the moment thank you for listening this is anton hopfel for Manapa Training.